You know what N-O spells? No. It spells no. That's what I said. P-A-R-K-I-N-G, no parking. Well, well, I was going to pick up my boss, and there was no place over in the Look, parking lot. Look, lady, that sign don't say no parking, except the man I'm going to pick up my boss. It just says no parking. Say, ain't I met you someplace before? Maybe it was at the policeman's benefit circus. I go to all them policemen's fairs. And I know some very influential people in the police force. Sergeant Gallagher and Sergeant... All right, I'm moving the car. I'm moving it. What about them taxi cabs out there? Well, what about them? Well, they're in the no parking zone, too. Look, lady, they got to unload passengers. Yeah, well, I got to load some. And, and, and if you're going to give me a ticket, well, then they deserve one, too. Yeah, OK, uh, but let's uh, start with you first, huh? Oh, no, no, ne never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Pleasure meeting you, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I, uh, I'd like you to have this copy of my autobiography. It tells how I made my fortune. Well, thank you, sir. I'll certainly study this. As a married man, I could use a little of your golden touch. I think you'll like it. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Katie. Bye, yes, sir. Ooh, Mr. B. Oh, hello, Hazel. I'm sorry I was late, but I was hunting for a place to park. Oh, that's all right. I thought maybe you hadn't received my telegram. Oh, no, we got your wire. I was to meet you at the airport and then go with you to the office. Oh, where's the car? About three blocks beyond your office. What? Thanks to the efficiency of the local police force. <laughs> Hazel, did you see who I was just talking to there? No. Who? William Sampson Cady. The millionaire? The multimillionaire. Affectionately known to the Bureau of Internal Revenue as Midas. Oh, where is he? I want to get a look at him. Oh, no, Hazel, he's gone. He just shook my hand and left. Oh, let's see your hand. <laughs> I thought maybe it had turned to gold. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet, but I think I'd better keep it in a safe deposit box tonight. What's this? His autobiography. A billion to one. When we got on the plane in New York, everyone was crowding around him asking questions. But all he would say was, if you want to know anything about me, just buy my book. Oh, I got to read that. Oh, he wouldn't talk to anyone on the plane except me. And we became very friendly. Fell for your charm, huh? Well, it wasn't actually my charm that started him talking. It was rather uh, an embarrassing accident. Oh, what happened? Well, Hazel, I'd rather not discuss it, so come on, let's go. Oh, no, Mr. B, tell me, what happened? I said I'd rather not... Thought of it still turns my stomach upside down. All the way to the office, he kept saying, I don't want to discuss it. I don't want to discuss it. So I just badgered him until he discussed it. Well, what happened? Well, you see, he was sitting on the plane next to this Mr. Katie. And Mr. Katie was just sitting there, you know. He wasn't saying anything, just grouchy and grumpy until uh, lunch came along, you know. And Mr. B started to eat his ice cream. What flavor of ice cream do they serve you on a plane? Well, I don't know, sport. Harold, don't interrupt. Well, anyway, Mr. B picked up this little paper cup and poured it over the ice cream. You know, he thought it was strawberry syrup. And it was ketchup. <gasps> ketchup on ice cream? <laughs> That's what Mr. Katie said. Do you eat ketchup on ice cream? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. Well, you gotta admit it ain't the tastiest way to start a conversation. But Mr. B was too proud, you know, to admit that he made a mistake. So he said yes and ate it. Oh, that sounds just like George. <laughs> <laughs> so after he ate it and, and, and kept it down, Mr. Katie said, I admire you. You're a man like me. You're an individualist. Well, I can think of a better word. <laughs> so then they was buddies, and he gave him a free copy of his autobiography. Oh, it's got a little ketchup on it. I better get that off. <laughs> 